If you have an Audi A5, A4, Q5, or even some VW Passat models, and probably some other stuff in the, the VAG group, then you might have this style of four-link front suspension. And if you do, well, the on-road handling characteristics are definitely decent enough, but unfortunately the, uh, the sort of reliability and more the repairability uh, not so great. Uh, unfortunately, my front bushings are uh, on their way out. They're not, they haven't failed or anything, but uh, the car is now starting to uh, sort of veer left and right. The sort of tracking is slightly out, but the tracking is out uh, sort of, well, differently depending on what bit of road I'm on, what corner I've just gone round. Uh, it will, you know, one bit of road it might veer slightly left and then you turn a few corners, go over a few bumps and then it might veer slightly right instead. That sort of indifferent handling characteristic can be a, a good symptom of bushing failure. And in my case, I actually have a, a reasonable amount of sort of cracking on the front bushes and quite a lot of play in them as well. So unfortunately, I need to replace them, and that's a problem for one main reason. In theory, replacing these arms should be pretty simple. There's just three bolts per side that you need to remove to remove all four arms in total. Unfortunately, one of those bolts is called a pinch bolt. That is a bolt that goes through the aluminium upright, or the, the steering knuckle, and it pinches the, the two bits of, well, sort of slightly cut aluminium together to hold the ball joints in place. Unfortunately, because it is a steel bolt in an aluminium housing, or an aluminium sort of casting, uh, the, the dissimilar metals corrode very well, and it's also quite a long bolt, which means that all of the corrosion ends up staying in place. And so, yeah, uh, it, it just doesn't come out at all. Uh, it takes a considerable amount of effort, and I've actually spoken to a few garages around here, uh, including uh, QuickFit, who actually refuse to do this job because of the pinch bolt. Now, happily, in replacing my own, we kind of came up with a bit of a technique that ends up being still a pain, definitely way worse than just being able to remove it as in theory you should. But in practice, it was actually a lot easier than we've seen some people do it. And so I hope that it will be helpful for you. Now, let me give you a quick rundown of the things that you will need or the tools and supplies you'll need to get this job done. You will, of course, need a selection of sockets, including a 17 millimeter socket for the wheel bolts, 16 millimeter sockets and spanners to be able to do the job entirely as all of the bolts and nuts are 16 mil. You will also need half inch and three inch ratchets and various extensions lengths and swivels for those ratchets. You also need a torque wrench that can do 40 newton meters, 50 and 120, a breaker bar and pry bar sets, a punch set, actually two, a parallel and center punch, a rubber mallet and hammer, especially to use those punches, a high speed steel or HSS drill bits, ideally a good quality set between sort of three and eight millimeters in diameter, a drill to use them, a propane or butane torch. I have a cheap one from B&Q that works just fine, but this is a necessity. I highly, uh, well, I wouldn't recommend doing this job without one of those. A ball joint press kit will be helpful as the ball joints do get seized in place pretty badly and you'll need an associated selection of spanners and sockets to use that kit, which in my case was 17, 19 and 22 millimeter. Uh, a pick set will be helpful as well as some small files to clean out the uh, sort of grot that's in the, uh, the mounds. Uh, an angle grinder will also be helpful or some equivalents and some ear and eye protection, especially when using that grinder. As for supplies, you'll obviously need the new arms. I ended up getting uh, a kit of all four arms, specifically the, the, the top shelf uh, Miele, Mile, uh, M-E-Y-L-E uh, arms on eBay for, I think it was about 140 pounds for all four, including replacement bolts in each box. It was fantastic. I highly, highly recommend you check eBay before you go and buy from, especially somewhere like Eurocar Parts here in the UK, uh, because Eurocar Parts wanted something like around about £200 for all four arms, just for the arms, and just for the the kind of the, the 
uh, lowest quality, uh, sort of technically branded, but non-name brand OEM type ones, not the original TRW ones, which were even more expensive and some were unavailable. Uh, so I think that the, uh, the Miele or whatever arms that I had are a fantastic deal and I highly recommend you get some of those instead. You'll also want some W40, some uh, actually some anti-seize or a, a fair bit of anti-seize uh, and you might also want some spare M8 nuts handy uh, for uh, getting the, the bolt free. As for the process, well the first thing you need to do is jack up your car and remove your wheel. It's a good practice to put your wheel under the side sill of the car just in case the, the jack or if you are using a jack stand that fails. You still, especially if you're under the car, you're not going to get trapped under it instead. Uh, also, if you do want to use a jack stand, that might be beneficial, especially if you don't have a second jack handy, as you will probably need one later on. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, once the, uh, the wheel is out of the way, I would recommend removing the nuts from the two uh, bushings towards the, uh, the, on the inboard side just remove the nuts they're 16 millimeter and it will take a fair bit of force to get them off but if you remove the nuts and leave the bolts in place they, that's them done and out of the way but also it still keeps it all in place for wrenching on the actual knuckle itself later you can also remove the 60 millimeter nylock nut on the end of the pinch bolt uh, in theory you should put a, a spanner a 60 mil spanner on the other side of the pinch bolt to hold it as you remove it but um, trust me, if it does move, then you're going to have a very easy time. If it doesn't move, which is definitely more likely, then, um, well, you're going to need the next sort of five minutes of this video. Once the nut is off, and assuming that your pinch bolt is seized in place, then you will want to get your, your propane or butane, whatever, you want to get your torch to heat up the knuckle. Now I used a, a bit of uh, sort of you know uh, aluminium foil just to to wrap it around the uh, rubber of the ball joint boots just to protect them a little, uh, but you'll generally want to be heating on the bottom side of the knuckle and only heat up basically where the bolt travels through the aluminium. It's at an angle; it comes out uh, closer to the sort of outboard edge where on the bolt uh, the bolt head side and uh, closer to the inboard edge on the i think it ends up being the front side on on both but on the the threaded side and you will want to heat up uh, the, more towards the threaded side than the bolt head side as that's where almost all of uh, the corrosion on our bolts ended up being i think we ended up heating it for a good 10 or even 20 minutes straight just to get it hot enough so that the aluminium expands uh, and also because it's aluminium it'll, it will expand both faster and at a, a faster rate or further than the steel of the bolt will and so that will help not only break up all that corrosion that's holding the bolt in place but it will also free up a bit more space so that we can actually get it out. Now unfortunately, even if you can get it spinning, you're very unlikely to be able to just unwind it all the way out. We tried on one side and it just didn't work. So I would highly recommend uh, obviously heating it up fully. Then I'd recommend threading on two uh, M8 nuts onto the threaded side and tighten them together really tight so that you can put a socket or a spanner on that side of the bolt as well as a socket, a 60mm socket on the bolt head and then turn them together uh, gently, uh, like very gently, uh, so as to not snap it at all. You can also try rocking it back and forward to try and break up some of that corrosion. Uh, we ended up using a breaker bar so we did have quite a lot of force going through it but we were very gentle in loosening it slightly, effectively tightening it slightly to get that corrosion to break free. If it doesn't move, especially with a, a reasonable amount of force, then I wouldn't recommend forcing it. I'd recommend heating the knuckle some more and even heat cycling it, as in letting it cool down and then heating it back up again, as that will help break up all of the bonds holding that corrosion in place. You should, after enough heat cycles and pressure and time, be able to get the bolt spinning. If it can spin, then first of all, it will be cleaning out a load of that corrosion as you spin it round, which is great. And second, you should be able to try and start unwinding it as the threads will grip the aluminium and, and all of the corrosion and push itself backwards. 
Now, I would not recommend trying to just unscrew it all the way. It's really tempting, and like I said, we tried it on the uh, on one side of my car, but unfortunately, it ends up getting stuck uh, in a very unfortunate position. Uh, and so, I would highly recommend you do unscrew it a bit enough to get the bolt head off of the aluminium so that there's enough space for you to get a pry bar behind there or start pushing on it. Once you have enough space there, I would then recommend using your angle grinder or cutting equipment to uh, sort of lop off the end of the bolt. Do it as close to the knuckle as you can without damaging the knuckle, without catching it too much, uh, so that it's as, almost as flush as possible, but again, without being, well, actually, touching the the knuckle itself uh, and then once that excess is off use a punch to create a center mark uh, and then use your uh, a relatively small drill bit i think i started with either a 3.5 or 4 millimeter drill bit uh, to bore a hole through the center of the bolt don't worry if it ends up being slightly offset uh, both of mine ended up being that way and it ends up actually being a, a help later on uh, anyway so don't worry too much. You will want to drill uh, at least between two and maybe four centimeters deep into the bolt, especially after you've already cut some off, as the more material that's sort of missing essentially, the easier it's gonna be to get out. Once you've drilled that far in, you can then start stepping up the size until you effectively break the corner or sort of one side of the bolt off or drill that side out. Don't go too large. You don't want to start drilling into the aluminium itself. You just want to be able to take off effectively one side of the bolt, uh, kind of like this, and uh, that's going to allow it to not only spin more freely, but still actually have some threads to grip a little bit to help it come, uh, sort of come out, essentially or unwind out. Once you've drilled out that side so that you basically have sort of half a bolt left in there, you can then use a pry bar to pry on the backside of the head while unscrewing that bolt, and it should start coming out. You will need to apply a fair bit of pressure to the back of the bolt head to get it to come out, and you'll need to keep applying that pressure the whole way out as you unscrew it. But once you do, it should actually and surprisingly come out. If you've managed to get this far, then, well, absolutely congratulations. It's no mean feed, and while you will need to do it on the other side, it's a te the, the sort of technique that we developed ended up being relatively quick. It ended up uh, speeding up the process of replacing one side uh, a fair bit. So uh, I would highly recommend trying that if, you, uh, if you're you know, doing this procedure, but, uh, I hope that's helpful. Now, when it comes to the ball joints themselves, those will also likely be seized in place, although using the ball joint press tools that I mentioned earlier does make that relatively easy. You want to effectively just position them so that the uh, shaft, the pressing part, uh, is going to push on the actual ball joint shaft itself and won't catch on the, the aluminium knuckle. Uh, obviously secure them in place and then just tighten them and keep tightening them uh, as the ball joint shaft should lift out of the knuckle. You might want to heat up the knuckle a bit, uh, for that too if it's not moving and if you can uh, stick a pry bar in the pinch point and prise it open a little which can also help with getting that out. Once both are out you can then remove the bolts that are holding those arms in place and they should just pull out and then it's time to get cleaning. You'll want to make sure that all three of those holes in the top of the knuckle are nice and clean and free of corrosion. You can do that with some brushes or some scotch bright pad if you can force it up in there, or even a, a small uh, gentle filing or just scrape it down. Just make sure that it's clean, obviously not damaging the, the area, but make sure it's free of corrosion. You can even use some brake clean. Of course, if you have heated the knuckle recently, maybe let it cool down a bit before spraying literal alcohol all over a you know, boiling hot metal, but uh, it's a good idea to, to clean it out thoroughly. You can then go and install the new arms. 
I would recommend installing the bushing side first as aligning that bolt and the, the bushing can be a bit of a pain once it's already in the knuckle. And before you push the ball joint end into the knuckle, coat that thing in anti-seize. You, uh, you or your next mechanic or the next owner will thank you later. Uh, it's also uh, just easier to push it in if it is literally covered in, in anti-seize. Uh, I would recommend if you can't get it in easily, first of all, try aligning it a little bit better, it can be a little bit sticky. And second, you can also uh, remove the small sort of silicon cover that's in the engine bay on top of the strut tower, as Audi has left a, a nice little hatch for you to be able to actually just shove the end of a, uh, the handle of a mallet down to knock the uh, ball joints into place. Uh, once those are nice and seated, I wouldn't recommend trying to tighten anything just yet because the suspension isn't at ride height. When you tighten, especially the bushings, they will get squeezed into place and the central shaft won't be able to, to turn anymore. And if you tighten it while the suspension is at full droop, when the suspension is up at ride heights, well, it will basically be preloaded or almost fully loaded and then when you you know go over a bump or whatever and hit your end stop uh, bump stop it's basically just going to immediately tear the entire bushing which is not what you want so you want to grab your jack especially if it's not currently supporting the car and use it to uh, effectively lift the whole uh, sort of hub assembly up to ride height then you can put the nuts on the uh, bushing bolts and uh, start tightening them down. They get tightened to 50 newton meters plus 90 degrees. It's a massive pain to get in here, so uh, you'll have some, some fun with uh, your various extension sizes and different, uh, well, spanners, and uh, we tried two different sizes of the torque wrenches, uh, but you will want to, to get them nice and tight again while the suspension is up and in place, and then you can tighten the nylock nut that goes on the end of the pinch bolt down to 40 newton meters. Once they're tightened, you can then take your jack down, stick your wheel back on and tighten those bolts to 120 newton meters, and then that's kind of it. Of course, you will need to uh, do the same on the other side as uh, any sort of suspension work or brake work, you do want to match on both sides and odds are if one side's ruined, the other side isn't far behind, if at all. But yeah, that's kind of that. I hope the description of how to remove that pinch bolt is helpful for, for you. Uh, it was a, a massive pain for us to get through and honestly the, the thing that I was dreading doing the most about this job. But now that it's done and now that we found how to sort of not cheat it, it's still terrible, but uh, speed up the process a bit. Uh, I'm definitely glad that both we managed to get it done and that it's, uh, it didn't take months on end. I think uh, on the, the uh, second side we did, it ended up being about, I think, three or so hours all in for that side. Uh, and so in theory, if you do manage to, to get both off in the same way, hypothetically, uh, this is definitely a, you know, what, in theory type thing, you could do it in a day. Uh, I would definitely schedule two at least uh, just to make sure, but Anyway, I, uh, I hope that's helpful. If you'd like to support the channel and you know keep watching these videos, then the easiest way to do that is just by hitting the subscribe button and turning on the bell notification icon. You can also check out a whole load of other videos in the end cards when they pop up in a sec. And like I said, I'll try and leave some links in the description to some of the tools and parts that I've used, including some Amazon affiliate links if you're interested. If you want to support the channel more directly, you can pick up a hoodie t-shirt like this one. Uh, this is the, uh, the at the wheel light design, or there's a, a black t-shirt with white logo instead, if you'd rather, or uh, this one's a hoodie, I've got the t-shirt on underneath. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of that really. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything else, feel free to leave them uh, in the description. If you've tackled this job yourself and you have any of your own recommendations, please do leave those in the comments down below. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video.